apologies for the delay in, uh, in getting started, so I'll try to wrap this up. Um, I'm not going to go too, too deep onto the technical side. It's really to give you guys a bit of, uh, of an overview of, uh, of what we're doing. And uh, if there is very specific technical questions, I will be in the back room. And, uh, and then at that point, we can go through a little bit more of the, the meat and potatoes, if you want, of, uh, of the software and, and the specifics. Okay. Um, so, camp leads. Who are we? Why am I here? What are we talking about? So, I'm um, just going to start with literally two slides of, uh, of what we're doing. So, as you guys know, we are um, a partner of Matsura on the software side. And why are we talking about software uh, when we're into a machine tool setting? The reason for it is going from three axis to five axis is a pretty big step. There is a little bit more to it than simply adding two axes um, to your existing machine. There is a lot of <coughs> considerations um, on the tool pathing, um, how could you create a tool path, on the fixturing, on the tool holding, tools holders, how do we make all of those elements work, and ultimately, how do we have a project that we're able to take and put onto the machine and make run efficiently the first time. That's really where we do see those opportunities um, the chances of you guys being successful. It's really to help you transition into that world without having all the worries of, of, of really making that solution work. So, why am I telling you this? And, and what am I talking about here is really something that we have been working on for basically the last 20 years. It's, um, it's really driven by the software side and also driven by the fact that we've been in your shoes. We are a manufacturer just like you guys are. We do have a shop to run, um, and that's what makes a very, very big difference on the software development side of things. It's not just doing software because we have to do software and because we have to update features because it's 2020 just around the corner. It's because it is features, these are features that we need ourselves to run the shop. So what am I talking about in terms of the shop? It's really, um, basically the same equipment that, that you guys would typically see into a five axis shop. So that means that we have those same needs that you guys have. We have to program those parts, make sure that regardless of the machine that's going to be running it or the controller or who has programmed this part, it has to work and it has to make a good part and it has to make a good part on time so that we can ship it and get paid for it. Exactly the same situation that you guys have. So I'll just let that video run for a minute or two. But those days of really just making a part and having a few trials and having a few um, scraps until we have a good part, these days are long gone. Um, what we're doing is really prototyping the onesies, the doozies. We're not going to make five parts to have one good one to ship to a customer. Whatever happens to go on the machine is going to turn into a good part the first time just because that's the only way we're going to make money on that. So what types of parts am I talking about? And, and, and where we're really trying to push that envelope is, again, I know everybody's seen an impeller. It's very easy to make an impeller and make it look good for a trade show. Completely different story if you have to make thousands of them that are good in dimensions every month completely different story, right? Um, what I'm talking about there is not on, not necessarily on the hardware side. The hardware is doing what it's supposed to be doing, but it's really what do we feed the hardware to make it do the part that we need at the end, right? And, and now those days of simply programming in the machine, doing prismatic and, and changing some, some feed rates, that's fine, but the, the core of what's gonna drive that machine is purely driven by software, right? And that's really where, where that power comes into play uh, to really control that hardware properly. So if we look there at that part a little bit more closely, it's really, how do we keep the tool as close as we physically can to the part? How do we handle the transitions between the blades in an effective manner? Not having 
full retrax all the way to the hole position. How do we keep the tool as close as possible to a part, still keeping it safe? I don't want to have to break a tool or replace a holder, or, or that is best case scenario. <coughs> Worst case scenarios are, are a lot worse than that. Um, and really, how do we utilize spindle as much as we can? Use the, the highest RPM, use the one tool. How do we control all of those elements? That is all software driven. So I'm just gonna fast forward that a little bit to get to the interesting part, where now, again, that is something where we're gonna keep everything very, very close. Using the same tool for the roughing, the semi-finish, the finishing, keeping everything very, very tight, very dynamic. I know that's, it, it looks scary, and it's not as scary as what it looks. It's all software driven, and again, that's really where, where that power to drive that har hardware comes into it. Um, what I'm getting at is now, making an impeller like that was just over three minutes from start to finish. Right? That's really one of the ways you're able to make money is to keep that machine going as long as possible. Okay? So, in terms of those, those needs and issues, we have those needs, you guys have those needs, and whether you're a one-man operation or a very, very large corporation, you will have the same needs of keeping those machines up and running. So, interesting thing to note there, some other software companies are using our product as well. There's, again, a very, very good reason for that. Those reasons being on the productivity side, I'll touch on some of those where we're here to really help you guys transition into that world safely and, and really painlessly. I know it can be very painful, we've been there. Um, and then really making sure that you're not gonna have any issues with, with that investment that you're making. And at the end, how do we make that into a one-stop operation? Again, it's all about being able to make those chips quick, right? So on the productivity side, what does that mean? That means that those tool paths, whether it's the part that I showed you or one of your parts, those days of programming of the machine are all gone, right? If you start looking at those tilted work plane, probing, 3D cutter comp, you're not gonna have a guy sitting at the machine putting those numbers in. That's, that's long gone. Um, on the productivity side as well, what we're gonna see is Know, when I walk into shops and I see the typical lean over the window with the hand on the keyhole, right? I see the smile, it's like yes, right? Those, those times of proving those parts like this are long gone again, right? We don't have time to make five parts to have one good one to ship, right? So what that means, again, it's all driven by the software. And unfortunately, typically that is not a conversation that happens at the machine discussion stage. It's like, oh, that's a software thing, go talk to your software guy. The reality is, to be successful with that machine, you need to have the proper software solution in place right from the start to drive that hardware properly. And that's really what we're here to help Matsura do, and ultimately you guys do, is really to make that connection from the virtual to the physical worlds in, in a quick and efficient way. So what does that mean? Kind of putting that into a little bit of a, of a simpler context, and again, I know it's not on the super heavy technical side, you want to go very heavy technically, come and see me after, uh, but I know quite a few of you have printed your, your boarding passes for your flats, your hotel invoices. When you click print, you don't really think about where the printer head is going, how much ink is coming out, and you don't really care either. You're just clicking print and it comes out, right? Now, if that driver is not operating properly, something's gonna come out, not quite what you're looking for. Into our world, that is really the job of that code processor, right? It's gonna really convert whatever you're deciding on the CAM side, which is specifying use tool number two, move it from point A to point B, into something that the machine will understand properly. At the end of the day, from a toolpath perspective, moving your tool from point A to point B, really has no impact whether you're running that toolpath on a mature machine or a completely different machine. Your tool is still moving from point A to point B. What is very important there is what that mature machine requires. Again, if that connection is not happening properly, something will come out, but not quite what you're expecting to get, or at least not what you're able to get paid for. Right? At the end of the day, that's really what matters. Am I able to make this part that's gonna give me, or, or put money into my pocket? So, very good case in point there is that exercise that we had with Autodesk 
at uh, Pier 9 in San Francisco. MX520 uh, in there, and again, fairly typical parts, drilling coolant holes into the fixture for the tombstone. Right? So nothing out of this world, it's just a compound angle on that hole, nothing crazy. Now, looking at it from a can perspective, again, everything looks great, pretty straightforward. The drill goes where it's supposed to go, and everything is, is perfect on the screen. Again, a little bit of reality check works out to be a little bit different, all right? So, once we put that into the perspective of the machine, and not just the part and the fixture and the tool, but really put that into the machine environment. So again, the reality might be slightly different in, in, in how that's presented. So just fast forward that a little bit. Oh, we're gonna get all the software to it. All right, now that's really considering that machine environment there, where now we're seeing that, yes, indeed, that is an area where we may have to pay a little bit more attention to what's going on versus that perfect case scenario that we've seen on the screen. Uh -huh. so, again, putting that a little bit more into uh, a real world perspective, there's a part actually getting mounted on it and within literally 20 seconds, we're like, yes, indeed, it is getting very, very tight, right? So that is something that you don't want to find out for yourself. <laughs> It can get very, very expensive, right? Very, very expensive there. So again, that is one of those differences of what is happening in the virtual world looks perfect. Reality kicks in, different scenario, and that is that scenario that's gonna bite you. <coughs> so how do we go about making sure we're addressing that scenario? Again, it's by working directly with Matsura. It's not gonna be one of our guys that's just gonna develop that solution on their own. Uh, it's by working directly with the right people at the factory in Japan, they're building those machines and we're putting that solution together. Then it gets propagated to all the different application engineers. So all your local guys do have the software as well. They do use it, they're able to support you. And there is a reason for that. It's really to make sure that what they're presenting to you is making sense in the real world, not just a new token world of, of software, all right? So what we're getting at is really to have something that's gonna be ready right from the start. It's not about having to redevelop a solution on your own with your software guy, having the app guy come into play and, and have a big party and you guys are just in the middle. It's like, well, my machine is there and I need to make parts, what are you guys doing, right? It's really about having a solution where it's gonna be your machine starting uh, right from day one and then you can start uh, hitting the ground. So. From a process perspective, it's really about being able to fit within your process, not drastically change what you're doing, but continue to work with what you guys have. So it's really about being able to insert ourselves within your process and make sure that you guys are successful with that Mature machine right from the start. Um, or really being able to start leveraging all of those multiple platforms and pick and choose what each platform is really good at, whatever you guys are really strong at in whatever environment and start leveraging that. So that means being able to do some wrapping in one platform, semi-finish in another one, five axis in another platform and combine all of those inputs into one project that's gonna run safely onto that machine. So we'll have different ways of extracting that same information to really bring you to the point where we're gonna have that understanding of the machine, go through all of those checks. Is the code itself making sense? Does it, are we specifying the tool number? Are we putting the tool in the spindle? Are we turning the spindle? Are we specifying a feed rate? Is that feed rate within the range of what the machine can do? Are we specifying a, a, a plane for an arc group? Are we doing cutter component arc group? So all those scenarios that you typically find out once you have a part ready to go and you get Press cycle start, you get 20 lines in, all armed. And now what? Now you have to go back, find the toolpath that's creating the problem, do the changes, regenerate them, bring them back, and go through that scenario quite a few times until you have something that you can actually run. I much rather be spending an extra 10 minutes on the software side, and once I get to the machine, it cycle starts and it goes. All right? 
And, and that's really the point where we want to be able to bring it to that point where you know that what you're going to be running is going to give you that problem. Okay? So that is one thing, really give you the code, but after that, having the code is not enough to really give you that part. Now you need to really start controlling that machine environment. How do we control the machine behavior? How do I control the technology related to the machine and the toolpath and actually the cut? Which side of the trunnion I'm tilting on? How do I control, let's say, my point spacing? I'm doing some more work. I have some really heavy uh, or, or really tight surface requirements in one particular area. I need a lot of points in that particular area. Even working from multiple platforms, that is something that I'm controlling. I'm controlling the machine environment, right? Not necessarily what's given to me by the camp system, what the machine does. But I see some, you know what I'm talking about, Mike. Okay, <laughs> um, and then really all the way to being able to really control the motion. And, and, and it's about putting that power back into your hands and, and give you the tools that you guys need to do your job properly give you the tools that you need to, to be able to do what you guys do best. Why am I showing you this? And why do you want, again, to have that level of control? Same type of scenario where what you're seeing on the camp side may be completely different than the reality, right? We just had the tool magically appear and then just turn around into the next orientation and that's great. The reality is completely different. There we're doing a full 360. Why does it even matter? Because it does matter, because if you do not catch that, that is where your customer, or you're going to have some issues. So what I'm getting at with those issues is, again, these are real life examples of something that looks great on the screen, not so much in reality, right? Ooh, I see the ooh, right? Everybody has the same reaction every time. That one, that one is probably one of my favorites. Gets to the end, almost cured it. Yes, I'm good. Finish the cuts, and that's the only one you're gonna take today. <laughs> right? So, you feel bad for this guy. Like, <laughs> right? So again, these are real life examples of something that looks perfect on the screen, and once reality kicks in. It really does kick in, right? Um, so, again, that, that's really one of those situations where you need to see beforehand what's going to happen with that part. It's one thing to get the code. Yes, the code is obviously what's going to drive the hardware, but is the hardware actually going to handle this code in a way that is making sense in the real life situations? And one of the only ways to check this is to really have that level of detail as part of the equation. Right? And it's not just about showing you a pretty picture, that's really that level of detail that you need and want to really understand what your machine is doing. So as we're diving a little bit more into it, looking at those five axis parts, again, nobody has extra vision. The only way to make sure that you're not gonna have a new spindle in about three minutes is to know where that tool is going, okay? So if you do have situations with over travels or ultimately collisions, these are situations that you want to avoid by any means, right? Those situations, again, that part, you can reach it, it looks great on the screen, reality might be different, and it has nothing to do with the interaction of the tool and the holder and the parts, that is purely machine kinematics. And without those tools in place to catch those issues before the fact, you're gonna find out for yourself the hard way. And, and those are very, very expensive, right? And ultimately, it's really about being able to build that understanding of that machine behavior. So with every point of the program, we're gonna be tagging a ton of data. Why are we doing that? Because we love numbers? No, because we really wanna be able to build that picture of that process. What is actually happening in there, okay? Getting the codes, making sure that the code is handled by the hardware property, but ultimately building that picture of that entire process so we can see what the machine is doing and being able to ultimately give you that opportunity to increase um, increase your chances of making better parts uh, the first time. 
And that really holds true at this point as well to really being able to see, is this code going to give me what I need at the end? Is it gonna give me the part that I'm needing to see and being able to ship to a customer and get paid for it? So these are all, all those elements that we're putting together and, and bringing to the table as part of uh, those, those ways of transitioning into that five axis world. Those, those days of, of just putting up parts flat on the table and just building fixtures is actually a lot more complicated than, you know, you grab the parts and then say, yeah, if I could have my tool go around it, I could make that happen, right? And it's really about working the same way your brain would look at the parts and say, yes, I could do that, right? And now all of those tools are in place to really help you transition into that world and, and get you guys to focus on what you're good at. So making the tool path, picking the right tools, picking the proper feed rates, and then we'll take care of making that happen into the real world. Uh, even if that means they're transitioning into ultimately different machines uh, with the same environments and, and make that happen in a very, very quick and easy way. So more specifically there about that particular solution, um, again, we don't do add-ons and extras, it's all in there. So if you come and see me after, I'm more than happy to walk you through all those features. Everything we're talking about is all in there, all in there right from the start. So no add-ons, no extras, so that means you get the software, the 3D models of the machine, the pose, the interface with the soft, with your EM systems, um, training, support, everything is in there, and now everybody's gonna ask, well, that's great, how much money is that going to be? This is the best part, and this is exactly why you guys are here today. That cost is zero. That is part of the machine package. That is how you guys are getting successful, and that's why you're working with Matsura to get a great hardware and software to drive this hardware properly. It's really about getting an entire solution in place into your shop and giving you the tools to be successful with that work, right? It's not just putting a piece of hardware there, um, it, it's really a whole package and make sure that you guys are able to make those parts very quickly and, uh, and easily. So, um, if there, I think we're actually getting there. Um, if there's a, a couple things there, it's really getting codes, making sure this code is gonna run properly on that machine and then really looking at it from a process perspective as where there would be opportunities to do things better and really help you transition into that five axis world painlessly. It's really not this scary, it's very straightforward. Right. So, um, I'm gonna leave it at that for now. I know we started a little bit late. Um, if you have questions or you want to dive into the technical side, come and see me, I'm more than happy to walk you through uh, an entire process from CAM all the way to to GPU. All right. Any questions? No. All right. Well, come and see me in the back. <laughs> <laughs>